When it comes to food, Alice Waters is a legend. At 64, she has done more to change how we Americans eat, cook, and think about food than anyone since Julia Child. Alice Waters was only 27 years old in 1971 when she opened her French bistro Chez Panisse in Berkeley, California, today considered one of the finest restaurants, not just in the United States, but in the world. Waters has produced eight cookbooks, but she's more famous as the mother of a movement that preaches about fresh food grown in a way that's good for the environment. The movement, now called Slow Food, is a healthy alternative to fast food. Well, you might think this appeals only to the Prius-driving, latte-sipping upper crust, but Alice Waters' ideas have gone mainstream. You know, it all started here at Alice's temple, Chez Panisse, in Berkeley, California. We're gonna be spit roasting tonight this pork, and so that's getting ready in the fire, turning on the spit. She still shows up almost every day. Now this is beautiful. As she has for the last 37 years. Now the potatoes are delicious too. To oversee the cooking with her exquisite, infallible taste buds. I was thinking this could also be spicier even. Yeah. So it's more pronounced. Yeah. It's not just the cooking that's made her famous, it's the ingredients. She was one of the first to serve antibiotic and hormone-free meats and insist on fresh, organic, locally grown fruits and vegetables. This has a beautiful flavor, and I just love the way it looks. You started a revolution in food, how we think about food, how we cook food. But do you think of yourself as a revolutionary? I guess I do now, but when I started Chez Panisse, I wasn't thinking of a philosophy about organic and sustainable. I, I, I just was looking for flavor. Flavor that comes from serving only seasonal food, one of her hallmarks. Say frozen, and Alice Waters shudders. Because all her food has to be fresh, she buys only from local ranchers, fishermen, and farmers. This is beautiful corn. Uh, it's from Chino Farms, and it just arrived uh, maybe like five, ten minutes ago. And you can see, it's all white on the bottom and just I thin. know it's going to be very sweet. People who meet Alice Waters are struck by how gentle and dreamy she seems to be. And they wonder how someone like that became so successful. Truth is, Alice Waters is a steamroller, relentlessly going after what she wants. And now she wants everyone to cook the way she does. And that's put her in the spotlight. People have become aware that, that the way that we've been eating is making us sick. Welcome. She's become the leader of a movement to change how we eat. And she's getting traction. Now you can go to your neighborhood grocery store, even Walmart, and buy organic. But in the process, she's become a target. People say Alice Waters is self-righteous, and elitist. And these are words I've heard over and over. I feel that good food should be a right and not a privilege. And it needs to be without pesticides and herbicides, and everybody deserves this food. That's not elitist. Even as a little girl, Alice says, she had a keen sense of taste. But what turned her into a cook was going to France in 1965 and eating simple, healthy country food. She had her epiphany. Back at Berkeley, she was a hippie involved in movements, anti-war, free speech, women's rights. But what she really loved was cooking and feeding her friends. And she still does. These are La Coyos. One day last August, she took us to a Mexican food stall in San Francisco where friends of hers were making slow food to go with organic corn and lots of spices. <laughs> you didn't tell me there was a bite. <laughs> My eyes are watering. <laughs> hey, you have to have a taste too. Oh, thank you. You realize two things when you travel around with Alice Waters. One is that deep down, she loves it when people eat. Isn't it, Tavon? My favorite thing, feeding. Feeding the cameraman. And you can't resist her. 
Sound needs it too. Yeah. <laughs> How can you not love Alice Waters? Gavin Newsom, a Waters disciple, is the mayor of San Francisco. She has, I think, done more to change our eating habits for the better than anyone in the United States of America. Obesity, huge issue now. Yeah, we consume lousy food. This is killing us. I mean, it really is. We have a drinking and eating problem in this country, not just in San Francisco. And this whole movement, to me, is the antidote for that. Alice talked Newsom into letting her organize a slow food festival outside City Hall last September. Growing the slow food movement is one of her passions. She was ecstatic that 85,000 people showed up. She walked us through the taste pavilions, introducing us to her acolytes, organic cheese merchants, and bakers. Oh, so nice that you came. Oh, it's beautiful. The centerpiece of the event was this a sprawling urban victory garden. So th this is a real vegetable garden okay, in yeah. front of City Hall. <laughs> this is the unbelievable. Ultimate. Symbolism. The garden, Alice's idea, was planted to encourage people to grow their own. So this is all the kale, and there's a little variety of um, broccoli. Broccoli? Broccoli. John. She brought us over to one of her favorite local farmers, John Legere, who uses only eco-friendly, or as Alice would say, sustainable methods. That day, he was showing off his specialty grapes. It's called Bronx Seedless. Now, are these more expensive? I have these priced at four dollars a pound. And I think There's the rub. A common complaint about organic food: it's expensive. We make decisions every day about what we're going to eat. And some people want to buy Nike shoes, two pairs. And other people want to eat Bronx grapes and nourish themselves. I pay a little extra, but this is what I want to do. To prove to us that healthy, slow food is worth the money and can be fast and easy, she invited us to her house for breakfast. I'm going to cook some eggs, and I'm going to make a little salad with the tomatoes. It was here that we realized that Alice Waters lives in a different world. I have a, a question. Where's your microwave? I don't have a microwave. How do you live no. without a microwave? Uh, I don't know how you can sort of live with one. OK, but how many stressed out working mothers have this kind of patience in the morning? She chopped up chives, diced up tomatoes, and marinated them in olive oil and garlic. Do you ever go to a regular supermarket and just... No? Rarely. I'm looking for food that's just been picked. And mm -hmm. so I know when I go to the farmer's market that, you know, they just brought it in that day. I have to say, it's, it's just a luxury to be able to do that. In, in a sense, it is a luxury. I mean, a luxury that's delectable. Once she spread the ripe tomatoes and Tuscan oh, yeah. olive oil on a slab of organic bread, she started on the eggs. I love the taste of olive oil with eggs. I think it's very Italian. This is a fireplace, a campfire place in the kitchen. In the kitchen. It's true. It is. Wow, look at that. Not sure if it was the roaring fire in the kitchen or the, quote, fast and easy part. Is she kidding? But this was one of the best breakfasts of my life. Eggs and tomatoes and crispy toast. Oh my gosh, it's so good. And how about this one? Looks nice. Look at that beautiful, perfect little top. Alice is already trying to influence the next generation by creating, guess what, another garden, something she calls the edible schoolyard. This is an effort to bring kids into a new relationship to food. Yeah. It's two more pink ones in here. I found two green ones. Oh, God. Alice the Steamroller got a local middle school in Berkeley to create a course where kids learn about growing food right on the school grounds. What are you guys planting? We're planting strawberries. Is this the most fun class that, you're, that you have? Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> but do you think you're really learning something important? Yeah. Yeah. Like what? Learning about compost, um, crabgrass, how to raise a good, healthy garden. Alice, look what you've <laughs> created here. You know, it's kind of a thrill. Every time I come here, I think I just want to get my hands in the you soil. Want I want to go down on my hands and knees He's and be a, be a child again. Oh, God. <laughs>
Oh, it's hard. The garden is just half of the program. The you kids also the learn how to cook the what they've grown. Just one this just here. came in from the garden. This, this was attached to the plant about 20 minutes ago. For many of the kids, it's the first time they've cooked and eaten fresh organic food. Did you ever cook anything that you thought before, oh my God, I'd never eat yeah. anything like that. Oh well, yeah, this yeah. one thing that's toast and then there's spinach and mushrooms on top of it. I thought I would hate it, but it was really good. Yeah. Really? Sounds great to me. Anybody think they might grow up and be a chef? Oh! <laughs> Two? <laughs> but come see me, come see me. <laughs> if Alice had her way, there'd be a program like this in every single school. We have schools across the country that are cutting gym where they can't afford books for the kids. Do you think it's possible that what you're doing or what you're trying to do can really be spread all across the country in these times? In these times, it, it needs to be spread more than ever. That children would grow up knowing how to cook. This is something that we don't know how to do anymore. But can we afford it, I guess but I'm asking. We can't not afford it. I'm looking at you, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, she's a dreamer. I am. But to others, she's a visionary. Now she has her sights on a new project, and we would like to warn President Obama that the steamroller is on its way. You have been pushing for a vegetable garden at the White House for years. Rose Garden, forget that. You want a broccoli garden. I have been talking nonstop about the symbolism of an edible landscape at the White House. I think it says everything about stewardship of the land and about our, the nourishment of a nation. So, do you think you'll get one? Well, I'm very hopeful. I've always liked the idea of doing uh, press conferences at uh, the In compost heap. <laughs>